So for those of you who saw the repair video on the, or the extensive repair video for the Maxcom Apollo 16E, which we have here, um, it's phase out loop chip and audio and um, RF output transistor, uh, plus other snags were some of the things. It was an uneconomic repair, but that's not what this job's about, or what the interest's about, about having a collection of CB radios. This is my own set, and I can spend what I like on it. I better put it on the right channel, otherwise Mr Chippy won't hear me. Tango 21 calling Mr Chippy, do you copy? Tango 21, we're sitting alone and clear. Roger. Roger, got you at the end of the lane. Right, we're now passing Ancaster service station. Roger, got you at Ancaster service station. Roger. Now passing through Ancaster crossroads. Roger, got you at Ancaster crossroads. Roger, got you at the top of the hill. Now, this is very sensitive radio. If you looked at the repair video, we managed to get... Uh, it's not so much the cyanide reading, which was, I think, 0.4 something for 12 decibel cyanide, but we could actually hear down to less than 0.1 of a microvolt, and the squelch responded to less than 0.1 of a microvolt. So, shouldn't have any problems hearing him round Scratchy Corner. Roger got you going around Scratchy Corner at Willsford. I'm on a Maxcom Apollo 16E radio. It's doing a full 4 watts output over. Right, that wasn't great. I'm hardly receiving you over. Roger on that. That's all received. Right, I did understand you said that's all received. It's just very, very noisy. Roger on that. So we might have to look at this on the spectrum analyzer and make sure that all those four watts are in the right direction. And of course that's why we do these tests. Right, we're now going over Wilsford Level Crossing. Roger got you at Wilsford Level Crossing. Yeah, I think the end point is that the crowd tells me, but uh, I didn't hear much of the path from that. Roger. Roger, got you at the Kelby turn. Roger, got you at Grayley's turn. Roger, you're going over Rawsby level crossing. That concludes the test. Thank you if you can hear me. Okay, now we did check this on the spectrum analyzer. I didn't see any reason why I needed to check it on the spectrum analyzer. But clearly, this radio is doing 4 watts, but it can't be doing much of it on 27 megs. So I'm going to just go through to our base station as we usually do. Then just hang on with me and we'll just look at the spectrum analyzer using this camcorder. So I'll just have a, a further look and we'll just see. I'm not going to retune it uh, on this camcorder. We'll do that behind the scenes and it will get sorted out. But I just want you to just see why it's only going for about three miles. So we'll go over to our base station. Tango 21 testing the Maxcom Apollo 16E into our Harrier CBHQ base station. 
Testing one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Now this is the replacement microphone and it's a coffin type mic. We don't normally use the coffin type mics, but this is a coffin one. So if you just hold with us, we'll go over to the special analyzer. So it's still showing us four watts on the test set. So if you look at that, we've got a nice 27 meg signal. So let's see if we can move up. I'll tell you what, I'll put in the other frequency of uh, 54 megs. And see whether we've got a second harmonic. Let's see where it is then, we'll do a band scan. Right, showing it there. Forty megs. Forty. Forty five. Fifty. Ah, ha! Ah. Yeah, it's got a second harmonic as big as the primary one. It's uh, minus seventy-two dBm at fifty-five megs. So that's what we'll have to get rid of tomorrow. So that's why he's not hearing it. He's got just as big a harmonic there. So thank you for watching.